hope everyone is as excited as I am to be here. Um, uh, first of all, I want to take a moment and really appreciate the organizers for the opportunity. It's, it's very much appreciated. Um, today, I'll very briefly uh, tell you about the issue of access to healthcare and the solutions that are available through our digital hospital. Uh, conventionally, I think access to healthcare has mostly been, I have to apologize, I'm, I'm actually not going to, to use the slides, but somebody else prepared them and there's an impromptu change in the speaker, so apologies about that. Um, but so, back to the topic, access to healthcare, uh, it's mostly been associated with the issue of financial, um, uh, financial resources or proximity resources. Uh, what I mean by that is, oftentimes when we uh, talk about access to healthcare, people's minds will most likely drift to think about those that cannot afford to pay for healthcare services uh, or that live too far from a point of care. And I'm here to tell you that that is only one side of the story when it comes to access to healthcare. There is also the issue of quality of care when it is accessible. Um, and then we will look at issues such as medical care in which there is globally, and especially in our target countries, which are growth countries, emerging and developing, um, there is a huge disparity in the availability of qualified medical professionals and specialists to meet the growing demand and the growing complexity of demand for care um, uh, in our target market and globally as well. On the other side, we have examples of medicinal care in which we do see a lot of systems uh, or ecosystems that are rated with counterfeit medication which add a burden of complication to treatment and in both cases, in the case of medical care and medicinal care, um, there, uh, there are studies by the World Health Organization showing a great correlation with uh, the number of deceased um, that are um, that, that will come out as a consequence eventually um, and these two points are only a few of a great number we identified in our research within medics care. So, um, I am actually called Leticia Monte and I am the scaling officer at medics care, which is a highway to a more sustainable healthcare system. Um, so, what medics is and what it does is we bring together healthcare capabilities and healthcare um, solutions uh, into an efficient, in an efficient way, in order to effectively um, improve the lives of patients and individuals in developing and emerging countries. Um, and um, so far, we've been registered since November 2015, and in this time, we have uh, been able to grow a network of 9,000 medical professionals on uh, one of our capabilities, which is the digital hospital itself, a software as a service available to patients and doctors, um, and we have about 400 patients on this platform as well. On the other side, the other capability we offer is a set of solutions as a service used to support governments, which are our customers as well, in delivering Sustainable Development Goal 3.8, which relates to designing and deploying uh, universal health coverage programs. Um, so since 2015, some of the achievements we've had besides growing our network of medical professionals is growing a network of about 100 uh, international partners around the world who support us in achieving our goals or in supporting our customers. Um, but we've also had brand recognition from um, uh, INSEAD, which has been known by the World Health, uh, nominated by the World Economic Forum as a leading business school in the world, which wants to do a, bit, a case study on our model or our approach to uh, healthcare solutions. Um, and we've also been uh, appointed or designated by the global health consumer technology um, space as a technology for the future. And we are pretty excited of how things are going so far. And at this point, we are really at the point of proof of concept in our journey. So in the past two years since registering the company, we've done a lot of background research eh, to understand the ecosystem, to understand the challenges, the dynamics, and, and how they interact together to create a very complex ecosystem. Um, and we have put together the capabilities and build a network uh, that we require uh, in order to support our customers or achieve our goals. And what we're looking for today, uh, worth mentioning, we currently do have a pipeline of about 20 projects with one contract signed in Southeast Asia. And we have two contracts that are being uh, signed as we speak in Southern Africa and East Africa in Kenya. And what we're looking for uh, today or here is a, uh, an investment. We're looking for about one million of investment uh, in euros, which we want to allocate uh, into strengthening our platform, creating more value for our users, um, so uh, building the functionalities that will help 
uh, in meeting more of their needs, but also in simplifying the user experience. Um, and we want to allocate about 20% into strengthening the security and the databases or data storage uh, capabilities that we have at the moment. And the remaining 40% is intended to go into um, heavy education and uh, communication because there is a major need uh, for mindset, mindset shift uh, in order to really uh, get the stakeholders that need the solutions the most into embracing the potential and opportunity that digital solutions and hybrid solutions have to offer to effectively achieve universal health coverage. Thank you. So, is this a medical device? Uh, so this is a medical software as a service. <laughs> Thank you. It is a software as a service, so it is a platform on one side, um, but it is actually also a consulting service. So as I, as I mentioned, we, our model is a B2G, but also a B2B2C. So our customers will be the clinics, the hospitals, and the governments. From a government point of view, all we do um, put together the capabilities we have available to support them in defining a vision for universal health coverage, but also deploying it through the software as a service we have, which we're going to tool for them. And for uh, medical uh, facilities, we uh, indeed you put the, the software as a service to their disposal in order to strengthen the delivery of healthcare to consumers. But you're dealing directly with patients as well? To, to no. no. We, okay. do, we, we deal with the businesses, so the, 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 the medical institutions and the government. Um, can you please describe what would be a typical patient's experience on the platform from the moment that he found out about the platform? until the moment where he finishes using the service. I'm not sure I understand the solution quite well. Absolutely. Uh, so for anyone who, um, they will sign up onto the platform, and into the platform they have a wide array of, of <coughs> sorry, of solutions available. One that will include the medical care, finding doctors, regardless of where they are, um, say someone travels from, um, I don't know, from, from um, Thailand, say Korea, having the flexibility and the possibility to find a doctor where they are, within the country or outside, because within the country there is a challenge already in finding uh, people. The possibility to take contact with these doctors, because having the, the, um, the details readily available is another challenge. But for the doctor as well, the possibility to flag the availability so that they can be contacted either by phone for a face-to-face -face consultation or remotely, so telemedicine is embedded and, and enabled within the application. Um, there is the possibility for payment, um, and there is the possibility for remote consultation uh, between, within um, our cross borders, cross border as well. So what we've done is really enable, enable a set of capabilities related to the factors affecting access to healthcare, which we have identified in our research. Okay, um, it's fascinating, very interesting. Um, how big 